Delicate and cold, scallops are pulled from the sea and rushed across continents. Soft as fruit and quick to spoil, they must be moved with speed, precision, and never allowed to warm. In the waters off Hokkaido, scallops rest beneath silted tides, their shells half-buried like porcelain coins. In Canada's Gulf of St. Lawrence, crews haul nets in freezing air, hands raw, breath sharp. Each region has its rhythm, but all share a common pressure, time. The moment scallops leave seawater, their cells begin to change. Enzymes break muscle from within, texture slips away, flavor dulls. What the sea keeps fresh for years can spoil in hours above deck. To prevent this, harvesting happens fast, often at night, when temperatures are lowest and surfaces stay cold without artificial help. But the cold alone is not enough. Scallops are shucked within minutes on some boats. Hands train to open, trim, and ice them in one motion. On larger vessels, the entire catch is submerged in chilled seawater, briefly held in insulated tanks that maintain salinity and oxygen. On the Alaskan coast, floating processing factories operate miles offshore. These ships clean, freeze, and box scallops before they ever see land, locking in freshness while still at sea. Each tray is stacked with care, wrapped in layers that prevent bruising, protected from frostbite just as carefully as from heat. Once on shore, the transfer continues without pause. Trucks with temperature-controlled containers idle at dockside, doors sealed tight. Inside, the air is kept below freezing, fans circulate to maintain constant flow, and digital sensors track humidity, temperature, and shock. If a box falls too hard, someone knows. If a shipment rises above minus 18 Celsius for more than 10 minutes, an alert pings across time zones. These scallops are not just cargo. They are monitored organisms, traceable back to a single boat, on a single date, from a specific part of the ocean floor. Some move in liquid form, packed in oxygen-rich seawater, to keep them alive until arrival. Others are dry-packed, no water, no preservatives, just cold air and time. In Japan, shucked adductor muscles are placed one by one on shallow trays, then flash-frozen by nitrogen mist in under 10 seconds. The result is a small, ivory-colored medallion, firm yet pliant, preserved at its peak. These trays are vacuum-sealed, boxed, and coated. In Boston, similar steps happen at fish piers layered in crushed ice, where speed determines value, and every second on land is measured in lost flavor. Even flights are planned around scallops. In Singapore and Paris, chefs know their vendors by harvest dates. Orders arrive within 36 hours, packed with dry ice or gel packs that outlast delays. Airport customs teams in some countries are trained to prioritize seafood clearance, knowing the slightest pause means product degradation. What arrives at the back door of a restaurant is the last link in a complex, carefully chilled chain that started with a diver's hand or a dredge's bite. Each stage is designed to do one thing, prevent change. Because the scallop, in all its sweetness and silence, doesn't tolerate mistakes. It moves only if every link holds. In a market tucked beneath the early light of Tokyo's Tsukiji successor, a single scallop rests on a tray of shaved ice. Its surface glistens. Its scent is almost imperceptible, cool, sweet, like the briefest memory of sea air. A chef inspects its firmness with the tip of a knife, looking not just for freshness but for integrity, that fleeting resistance which proves it was never allowed to warm. The transaction is simple, but the path that led to this moment is anything but. The scallop has crossed oceans, borders and customs barriers, touched digital tracking systems and cold chain redundancies, all in the name of maintaining a single, silent promise. No change, no softening, no scent of time. Each year, millions of scallops are moved under these expectations, but few ever see the full scale of the systems involved. In the cool halls of a Hong Kong distribution warehouse, shipping containers arrive by the hour. Some are filled with shell-on scallops nestled in sawdust-thick layers of ice, stacked with interleaved plastic to reduce bruising during transit. 
Others are vacuum-packed trays, each scallop placed precisely so it never touches another, sealed under negative pressure with temperature-sensitive adhesive film. The film itself is engineered to bubble slightly if storage conditions fluctuate. It's both a seal and a signal. In a corner of the facility, teams review sensor data from inside containers, examining thermal graphs that show the exact moment a reefer door opened, the spike in temperature, the cool-down lag. These fluctuations might last only minutes, but they're enough to trigger price adjustments or full shipment rejections. Even more quietly, software guides these flows. In Northern Europe, supply chain AI cross-references scallop harvest volumes with international air freight capacity and weather predictions. A storm system over the Pacific may reroute a batch through Frankfurt instead of Dubai. A sudden heat wave in California might result in cold storage trailers being re-iced mid-transit. The systems are reactive, but they rely on anticipation. A scallop cannot be allowed to wait. There is no such thing as a spare hour in its transport. Everything is precision stacked, not just physically, but temporally. This also means the materials carrying them must work harder than they seem. The corrugated plastic trays used by processors in the Bering Sea, for instance, are triple layered, molded with micro ridges that elevate the scallop just enough to prevent pressure buildup from below. Each tray can hold hundreds, yet they're designed to be feather light, their surfaces treated with antimicrobials to minimize surface contact risks. In Iceland, engineers have developed pallet covers infused with insulating gels that freeze at just the right point, releasing cold passively over 48 hours. These sit atop shipments like quiet shields, invisible but vital. All of this effort, all of this careful motion, results in moments of surprising stillness. In a Singapore restaurant, a waiter opens a container tableside. A puff of cold air lifts from the tray. A chef slices through the scallop center, exposing flesh that yields without tearing. There is no discoloration, no pooling of brine. The texture is clean. To a diner, it feels immediate, as if the scallop had just been pulled from the sea. And that's the effect of all this labor. To maintain the illusion of nearness, of unfaded freshness, without revealing the many hands and systems behind it. But this system, remarkable as it is, has limits, and its evolution is shaped by them. In Chile, where warming oceans have affected spawning cycles, researchers are using submersible drones to scan for new viable beds. These drones transmit seabed data in real time helping boats avoid over-harvest and reduce fuel costs by optimizing routes. Meanwhile, in South Korea, floating aquaculture farms use solar panels to power their on-site cooling stations. These rafts double as both harvest platforms and storage units, buying an extra six hours before scallops must be transferred to larger vessels. Even the shells, often discarded as waste, are being put to use. In parts of Scandinavia, they're ground into aggregate for biocement, or layered into coastal restoration structures that support coral regrowth. At the consumer level, traceability has become a new form of trust. QR codes printed on boxes lead to databases showing when, where, and by whom the scallop was harvested. This isn't just for provenance, it's a subtle demonstration of confidence. If a shipment can be tracked back to a single latitude line, it's less likely to have been tampered with or mishandled. And in markets where freshness is everything, this transparency matters more than advertising. It's verification without spectacle. Yet for all the technical brilliance and machine logic, the scallop S transport still depends on the quiet instincts of those who've handled them for decades. In small processing houses in Maine or Maroran, workers run gloved fingers along the muscle to check for damage that sensors might miss. A slight softness near the edge. A change in color too faint for a camera to flag. These checks are silent, unrecorded, passed through muscle memory and experience. They're why some scallops from independent fisheries still command a premium, even against industrially frozen competitors because someone noticed something and made a decision. At the end of all this movement is something far more still. A plate, a diner, 
a small ivory disc that sears golden under flame or melts against the acidity of citrus. It holds no sign of its miles, no hint of the packaging or paperwork that carried it here. It simply tastes like salt and cold and softness held just long enough. And in that taste, there's a quiet kind of awe, not just for what the sea gave, but for everything it took to keep it tasting like the sea. Far from the cold coasts and refrigerated trucks, in a sunlit restaurant tucked into the hills above Nice, a plate is lowered gently onto white linen. On it lies a single scallop, seared to a thin golden edge, its center still cool and silk-like. A drizzle of lemon oil softens its sheen. To the diner, it is just a delicacy, refined, minimal, exquisite. But what rests on the plate is a system made edible. Beneath its simplicity lies a matrix of global coordination, quiet innovation, and deep respect for the fragile line between nature and nourishment. What makes the scallop exceptional isn't only its flavor, it's the level of precision it demands. Few food products require so much from so many over such a wide span of space and time. In the frozen Atlantic, satellite imagery helps locate plankton blooms, guiding boats toward fertile beds where scallops thrive. In processing plants near Saint-Pierre, automated graders separate the mussels by size, but not without a final human glance. Elsewhere, in cold labs outside Bergen, marine biologists monitor the reproductive cycles of scallops in hatcheries, adjusting salinity and light exposure so future generations can be seeded into the wild with better odds of survival. These are not just logistics, they're acts of care, and the outcomes go beyond flavor. In recent years, efforts to reduce waste in scallop logistics have led to innovations far from the plate. In Thailand, a startup has begun turning scallop shells into biodegradable utensils, heat-resistant, scent-neutral, and strong enough to replace petroleum plastics. On Canada's east coast, trials are underway to use discarded shells in erosion barriers, where their calcium content helps stabilize sand and nourish marine vegetation. Even the viscera, once discarded, are now fermented in parts of Japan into umami-rich pastes that become the base of high-end sauces and seasonings. Every part is being reconsidered, not just for efficiency, but for value. Transport, too, is evolving. As demand grows in inland cities far from coastlines, engineers are developing modular cold chain pods, compact, solar-cooled containers that can move on rail networks with minimal external infrastructure. These are being tested in parts of India and Brazil, where access to seafood is limited not by harvest, but by temperature maintenance. The potential is quiet but transformative, bringing scallops to places they've never been, without compromising the standards set by high-end culinary centers. Sustainability is no longer a side note. It is woven into the process. In New Zealand, certain scallop beds are now harvested only once every three years, giving stocks time to regenerate naturally. These rotational systems are monitored by drones, which scan the seabed for density and sediment disruption. The data they collect helps enforce catch limits and detect illegal dredging. In places like Norway, some boats now operate as hybrid electric vessels, reducing emissions during both harvest and transit. The scallop is soft, but its systems are becoming hard-lined with precision and accountability. Even how scallops are discussed is changing. On social platforms in Taiwan and Denmark, chefs now post not just recipes, but shipping dates and harvest coordinates. They tag fisheries share supplier timelines, and explain why a specific catch from a specific bay on a specific day produced a superior flavor. Diners begin to follow along. They don't just ask if the scallop is fresh. They ask where it was pulled, how it was packed, whether it was frozen at sea or at port. It is a subtle shift, but a meaningful one. Freshness as narrative, sourcing as taste. At its heart, this global effort mirrors something older and more instinctive, the act of protecting something delicate, moving it without harm, ensuring that when it arrives, it still speaks the language of where it came from.
Whether it is wrapped in a nitrogen-chilled tray or still opening and closing faintly in a shallow tank, the scallop carries with it a kind of quiet expectation, not just to nourish, but to retain its origin, not just to be consumed, but to be understood. And so it arrives, in kitchens, in markets, on plates of raw simplicity or elaborate design. The effort vanishes behind the flavor, the ice, the crates, the hands, the sensors, the flight paths, the tide charts. They all dissolve in the instant the scallop meets the palate. What remains is clarity, sweetness, and a small, cool echo of the sea. From remote bays to candlelit tables, the scallop moves without sound, without spectacle, only precision. Frozen at sea, tracked across borders, packed in air-cooled silence, and served within days, it is one of the most delicately handled foods on Earth. Next time its sweetness lingers on your tongue, remember, behind that softness lies steel, cold, and coordination, a fleeting flavor carried with care.